ready? And the podcast will begin in five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause. Season finale, Heaven Aras Pakachaga. <laughs> Solid yung palakpak na yun ah. Parang palakpak ng ninong yun ah. <laughs> okay. Kamusta ka na anak? I'm actually doing pretty good. I can't believe this is actually happening now. I know. Let put that, put down your mic so they can see your handsome face. Put down your mic. That was itwist mo pataas ganyan. So that way, yun. Ayan oh, pogi oh. You told me comfortable. I was pretty comfortable where I was at, but we're going to make this work. So yeah. So, ikaw big boy in the states, you're a grown man. People are like maliit na bata. They think you're a young boy and this is probably the first time people are going to go, what? He's, by the time pinalabas to, you're probably 20, yeah, you'll be 25 when this, when this airs. And, and it's been pretty crazy because um, this year and the end of last year, it's, um, it's had to have me grow even, for, even quicker, losing a friend in uh, Baguio yeah. in December yeah. and then losing Tito Louie yeah. to start off the year. And, you know, how are you? Is if um, it hit me hard, it me it hit me hard. But I could only imagine what you're going through. I think I am going through the depression phase of the grieving process, and it's not good. Um, this week and last week, we've canceled episodes except for this episode. So mm. this is the only episode that um, I was willing to do, but we had to cancel other episodes because I couldn't get out of bed. You know, the good thing about that from what you just told me right now is at least you are going through the process. It's hard. Of course. I mean, it's never, it's never going to be easy. But the fact that you're willing to go through it, I mean, choose your heart, right? Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about it is when we were on the phone this past week, mm. you were having some high blood issues. Yes. You weren't feeling too good. You were monitoring yourself. And I was checking up on you. And what's great is we check up on each other very often. Yeah. Right? Which is good. It helps. It does. It does. And especially during these times. And of course, Tita Nards as well, right? That was another oh. tough part. Um, so we've lost, uh, you've lost, we've lost uh, someone dear to us, a friend, si Bagyo, especially you, because parang kapatid mo na yun. And then we've lost Tito Nards, who's like a grandfather to you also. Yeah. And then your Tito Louie, who's, who's actually my brother. Your only. Your only brother. And your only. My only uncle by blood. By blood, yeah. Crazy stuff. And I was even asking you, I was like, hey, are we going to continue today? And yes. you pushed forward with it and you know, kudos to you. And it's crazy because the last time I was on any type of Paco show was Paco in the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were still in the blue room. We were still in right. Via Marisol. And it's crazy because, you know, watching all the previous episodes and even the glimpses of what you've showed me, I can't help but be proud. Because not just what we're doing here right now, it's not just these road condenser mics and going from using just the webcam that's built into the MacBook, <laughs> right? Yeah. To all of these, you know, real, real legit equipment. Also, just the path that you've taken. You know, I've, I've noticed the, the relief from that time. And now I, I get that these times are hard. Right. But just everything that we've gone through... As father and son. And we're yeah. going to touch on that later mm. as well because mm. we talked yes. about it. We know this is going to be a transparent thing. And, yes. And, you know, we have, we have a lot of interesting stories to share. But it's just, I can't help but be proud. Even as a son. Because I want, me too. A lot, I, I get it. You know, we, we've had our ups and downs, but this is the best that we've ever been. Yeah. And I, ne I wasn't sure when I was going to do this podcast, but given everything that that's happened, right? Because like being anxious and all that stuff, I was like, man, I'm going to reschedule. <laughs> and then, and then we lost Tita Louie and I'm like, you know, I'm not going to reschedule <laughs> because you got to appreciate every day at a time. And yeah. I, I don't know yeah. when I'm going to have this or if I reschedule, am I going to regret it? You know, yeah. rescheduling. So That's I'm true. glad that we actually showed up, pulled it, pulled it together. Yeah. You know, your cholesterol is, you know, at an all time high. high right now. Mm -hmm. But hey, we're here and we're going to make it 
one of the best finales that we could ask for. So And you know what? This is good because season one finale was Ninong Jonathan and uh, your season two finale. So ang gusto ko talaga sa finale are people who are close and dear to me. Ang season opening palagi is Tita Jaja. So oh, you, you know, you gotta start with uh, Always. You know. But but thanks for doing this. I of really course. I really appreciate you and I'm very, very proud of you. As in sabi ko nga and and ito ah, sa mga sa mga nakikinig at nanonood ang expectation ko sa is really wala because just by being born oh, okay na ako eh proud na ako din sa part na yon alay ko binabalik po sa kanya and di ba i always tell you it's up to you what you want to do f- to make yourself proud of yourself di ba because yeah. oh, i will always be proud of you whatever no matter what you do and all that But here you are, you're a grown man, and I'm just, um, paano ko ba sasabihin? I'm in the sideline cheering you on. Dati pinagsasabihan kita, dati diktador ako, I would dictate stuff in your life. To an extent. To an extent. Yeah. But when you hit 18, can you tell them about oh that God, now? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> so when I turned, <laughs> so it was crazy, right? I had a... Uh, And this was like the first time I had a room, right? right? And it had its own door. And that was crazy because we were blocking that door. Yeah. I Like I had to let you know. I, like I was 17 at the time. 17, was I 17? Yes. Yeah, I was 17 at the Text time. Text me wherever you are. Yeah, just to go to the friend's house, I had to, I had to be like, yo, I'm going over here. And, and then whenever I would change locations, I had to let you yes. know. And then it even got to the point where I started going to like parties and stuff like that and I'd get in trouble. Uh-huh. And so I would let you know, hey, I'm staying the night here. Yep. But really I was somewhere else. Mm. Or I would go to, you know, Tito, you know, his house and yeah. then and I'd be like, Hey, can you please not tell my dad? <laughs> and this was I was still 17 at the time and and you were always on my case. Once it yeah. hit 10 o'clock. If there was no update, yep. you know, you had to know. But then, once that 18th birthday happened, me and my friends went out. It was like 10.01. <laughs> I didn't get a single text. <laughs> What's going on? I, ha- I called you. <laughs> exactly. I called you. Because it didn't make sense to me. I was like, okay. <laughs> I might have broken the sweat a little bit. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Um, were you gonna call me? You're like, you're 18. <laughs> no. Really? Can I unblock my door now? <laughs> yeah. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that was still my house. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that was a uh, that was very hum humbling, right? Because. You know, the whole time I had that leash and all of a sudden it was free reign. Right. But. Was that wrong? I mean, uh, mal- dapat ba gradual or. You know, I don't know. Because you always would say with great power comes great responsibility. But like you mentioned, right? Even even growing up, I didn't really have an expectation as far as uh, even grades. Right. You know, and this is something that I know that you openly discuss with your peers and. I've mentioned before, hey, you know, maybe if you set a little bit of an expectation for me, yeah. you know, I would have gone or not gone. I would have been more inclined to go to college and, you know, do the whole school right. thing. And then I did. I took up nursing. Right. And then I dropped out. Right. And then that felt like a relief because I didn't want to do nursing in the first place. Pressure, you know, it was pressure of of having to amount to something. Right. Right. Because I wasn't sure. You know, I wasn't sure. My freshman year, I had a great year. I had a 3.8 GPA. Right. And then the whole divorce thing happened in yeah. my sophomore year. And then all of a sudden, the 3.8 became a 1.8. Right. And then I just started caring less. But <sighs> those times really built character. And, so you on. And, yeah. and I guess the greatest thing that I got from those, those times were lessons you know, on how to maneuver through certain things and of course you know dealing with my very first heartbreak right yeah and during that very first heartbreak what my freshman year it was just some really teeny bopper love <laughs> thing you know that was really one-sided 
but I tried to do everything right, and then everything went wrong. And I feel like like, it hurts. What do I do? Yeah, go back to your room. Exactly. Let it out. Let it out. You know, you showed me all American rejects um, gives you hell, right? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like what you were trying to teach me at the time was to protect me, and to and to kind of give me a um, a backbone. Yes. But as I grew older, you know, and started getting into relationships, you know, there were there were of course lessons that I had to unlearn because you weren't perfect. And I was teaching you some wrong stuff. Some wrong stuff, yeah. exactly. So yeah. the the good thing about all of that is we were able to dialogue. We were mm. able to talk. I was able to knock on your door and say, hey, dad, kind of ruined some things for me. Yeah. But as far as being resourceful, that was that was the biggest thing that I learned from you. You, you never, you, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. When I was in high school, I would come up with all these different kinds of excuses as to why I didn't do homework and you know, why I didn't try harder here or just saying stuff as simple as I don't know. And you didn't want me to do what you call bus stopping. Yeah. You didn't want, you, your philosophy was if you miss the bus, are you going to call it a day? Or are you going to, you know, run to the next stop? Mm-hmm. Are you going to wait till the next bus? Are you, you're going to have, you got to find a way to get to your destination. And I never took it as intensely when I first heard it. Right. But it wasn't until I got into sales. Uh, or it wasn't until I, you know. Lived on your own ran away from home yes yes you know literally and and i had to really dig deep because i feel like i've gone through layers of rock bottom you know i've gone through rock bottom once the first time when i ran away right right i was 18 19 i was 19 years old when i ran away we got into a little argument yeah and it was one of those things wherein oh why should i listen to you when Like I was not, I was not, yeah, I was not practicing what I was preaching. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those things where, you know, I don't have to be here. And it's cool because we were able to rekindle our relationship at that time, though it wasn't the best, as good as it is now. Right. You know, it was, it was decent and we were able to address those things. But being resourceful, you know, having to, having to dig deep, having to, to catch the next stop get to that destination and then from there i was like okay i need some kind i need mentors and then you introduced me to audiobooks yes and so as i listened to, to guys like jim Rohn and stephen covey uh even grant cardone tony robbins you, know, you start hearing things like you know quadrants of prioritization and and even just sayings like the difference between successful people and failures is the successful people are willing to do what failures don't right or aren't willing to do right regardless of how they feel at the time na, yeah the mga failure bumastap na sila eh. and i guess that's one of the things too about being an artist right is you're you're looking for that lightning in a bottle of inspiration yes but then what happens after that right you wrote the song now what well now you got to market now you got a campaign yeah and even when you don't feel like it even when you fear the rejection when you when you kind of have to put on that cold calling hat you know look for look for lists and yep. qualify the targets yep. your target audience and send that message person by person individually and try to spark a connection you know you you can't just rely on the feeling you got to go through it so okay. me difference, right? There's, if you feel like th- there's a difference between feeling, the feeling of doing something or not doing something versus the commitment of doing something. Totally different, no? Absolutely. And you know what? Even though, even though I know that, doesn't make it easier. Right. You know, it's still, you got to fight that procrastination right. Right. and you right. got to fight that urge to do something else and... 
you know, maybe something sounds more enticing than reaching out to people at a particular time, you know, because there's so many distractions. Uh, but at the same time, what's important now? Because everything that I do, even even deciding whether to be here or not is going to affect the next two to three years, whether yes. I know it or not. Yes. So I just kind of have like this little countdown, like this little timer in my head where I go, all right, five seconds. <laughs> go. And then just do it. Ang maganda, no? maganda yung sinabi mo na, na hindi mo alam kung anong impact ang mangyayari dito. The goal here today is to inform and inspire people in the audience who are practically going through stages you've gone through in life or maybe going through a father and son yeah. conflict na if we can touch the heart of even one of our listener or listeners or audience, we've done our job. We, okay. Exactly. And, you know, I think the first barrier that has to be shaken up first is, you know, a lot of people from the outside looking in yeah. might feel that it's difficult because of maybe the celebrity status that you carry, right? How could I possibly relate to these two? How could he, me, relate to somebody that's watching who didn't grow up the same way, but really, you know, here in America, pare, pare, lang. we're all the same. Yeah. And that was the interesting thing, you know. Uh, that was something that, that was a little tough for me because, you know, I didn't, I didn't really get any of that special treatment. And, Did you want the special? And I didn't want it. Okay. You know, I, I, just, I just wanted to live a normal life. Right. You know, because growing up, it, I was kind of lived life under a microscope. What um, was the pressure like? It, I'll, I'll, it was, again, I'll set it up uh, in the question. Because I, I'm not an artist, my mom dad, right? Yeah. So, I lived a normal life. But you... From the day you were born, nasa cover ka ng, ng magazine, kumbaga, and may, may, may ganito, may ganyan. Nung, nagka, nung nagkaisip ka, what was it like growing up heaven? It didn't make sense. You know why? Because I wasn't as close to, um, like let's say, I wasn't as close to my mom as the tabloid suggested. But ah. at the same time, I, ha- I felt obliged to have to defend. Right. You know, because you grow up, and I'm not saying that I was living under a microscope as much as my mom and, you know, my, my dad were, my stepdad. You said, yeah. Or you, mm-hmm. even when you were in America, you know, there are some people who thought you were dead. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, what? He's still alive? Right. Stuff right, like right. that, right? And yeah. you were working for Fry's Electronics at the yeah. time. You're living a regular life. And, we, and, you know, we got another story for that. Yep. Uh, a humbling one, right? But, you know, hearing people talk, crap about my parents it was interesting because it was like based on gossip you know i would see you know i would see my my mom cry about something that was slanderous yes it it wasn't real and it made me very angry it made me a very 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 angry kid because you know she was traveling a lot going going to places all the time and i was always at home and you know though Though I lived, I had things that I can't complain about. Right. You know, I, I, I do wish that at the time I had a closer relationship with, you know, with my mom. And although we're a lot better now, you know, she's helped me, she's helped me throughout some very, very difficult times in my adulthood and figuring things out. I realized that a lot of my problems and a lot of those pressures came from, you know, those, um, one those being in like what magazines and mm. and having to put up this image that oh, like how does this make sense like you're you're making you're making this whole situation but uh, it's a failure you're, 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 you're oh. making it you're you're trying to make it uh, out to be something it's not right yeah, and all of a sudden you know people have this idea that yo this guy is living the best life but really it's not because I had to keep my mouth shut. Because I felt like if I said the wrong thing, I'm doing you guys a dishonor, right? a disservice. And so I felt obliged 
to always try to one defend you guys uh back you guys up you know even through through the stuff uh when i was 15 you know when things weren't going too well yep. at at church mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna say it you know people were talking their shit and i and i still and as angry as i was you have to you're, keep it together you're, you're my dad yeah i'm gonna back you up you know what Kahit I mean? mali -mali na yung ko. even though it was wrong mm -hmm. i was gonna have your back but it didn't it didn't mean that i was disappointed it, it didn't mean that i wasn't disappointed right and then ang mali pa nun, ang mali ko pa nun is ang yabang ko pa like wala akong maling ginagawa at that time i felt that i wasn't doing anything wrong exactly and and you were convincing me and yes. you're, you're trying to tell me that what you were doing wasn't wrong and some of the lessons that you, you were telling me. You know what? I don't remember what you said to me when I was trying to share my, my uh, wrongfulness and trying to convince you was, what you mo, Dad, I don't want to hear your problems. I'm your son. You, I'm, talk to someone else about your problems, not me. Yeah. Parang, yeah. Oh, oh. But because at the time, right, you would be going, you would be coming home and there would be all these things being thrown our direction. And I'd hear some things uh, from you and I'd hear things from other people and you'd be stressed out of your mind. Right. You know, because there was a time where we were going through foreclosure and, yes. and figuring out where we were going to live. Right. That was stressful on your part. And then you'd be, you'd be coming home and I'd just be minding my business. And just the fact that I was there. As in your words, in your crosshair, <laughs> I'd be on the other end of um, of uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> you'd be on max decibels, like your gain would be through the roof plus six. So I'm just like, oh shoot. Um, it was hard, though. Uh, it it's it's tough to complain, but it did take a toll. Right. You know, even even though. We're here now. Yeah. There are scars. There are scars. There are scars that we could, you know, that we can discuss yeah. openly because of how, of what we tried to do to atone yeah. and repair and fix those. And you could just tell it even on your, in your demeanor. You don't have that, um, you don't feel like you need to prove something. And I think that's what makes me most proud is, you know, we can banter. If people go through, uh, through the Facebook comments, I'm probably cracking jokes. Yeah. Maybe making jokes at your expense. But I'm okay comes, with that. But it, but it comes with, with love and I it know. comes with, you know, the best intentions. Not to tear each other down, but rather yeah. to let people know like, hey, you know, we, we're cool. Like we've, we've said worse and we've... We've done. We've gone through the trials, and these are the tribulations that we are. Right. Yeah. You know, Is it because we have made a conscious effort to make it work? I'd say so. Uh huh. I'd say so. I think your open mindedness, uh, especially when it comes to mental health. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I was uh, when I was diagnosed with depression, prior to that, it was there won't be instability in my household. Right. And then. Yeah, as I started going through like talk therapy and all that stuff and started figuring out, putting the puzzle together as to where did this issue stem for? What's the root of, where's the root of that matter? You know, why am I getting triggered by so-and-so? Things started to make sense. And the things that I started to address to you made yeah. more sense because it was cohesive. It, I was looking, I was sparking dialogue to get an answer for something that was a piece of the puzzle that I was trying to put together uh. to make more sense and give myself, you know, not just peace of mind, but closure on that page. Correct. So you can move so that I could, yeah. so, so that I could so continue writing the mm -hmm. rest. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the isip ko, pumasok sa isip ko ano, and I was talking to Tita Jaja, and sabi ko. Looking back in hindsight, heaven probably had more pressure than anyone could ever imagine because he had to fit into roles. 
oh mana ka dapat sa daddy mo. Oh mana ka dapat sa mommy mo. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, people wanted people wanted to try to categorize me somewhere, but yes. it was tough because you know, I I wasn't raised formally trained in anything. You know, these these kids they come in and you know they're taught an in, you know they take lessons to learn an instrument and all that stuff. But I'm I'm the kid of yeah. uh, I'm the kid of two musicians. Right. That was never you know pushed to train anything. And it was kind of tough for me because karaoke is hard, especially oh. especially when you know people expect you to right to sing and do all that stuff. And especially I'm just when like, you when Yo. you sang, I know you'll be safe oh here my by, <laughs> by River Maya. <laughs> that was all bad. I told that. I told Tito Rico Blanco about that. Yeah, he was, he was laughing. He was no, no, no. <laughs> but but that, at the same time, that um that carried over into adulthood too. Even going into parties, that was a little tough because they were expecting. They were ex- they'd expect something. Oh, you know, he's he's the kid of Geneva Cruz. It's like no, 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 no. <laughs> this is it. This is it. And then I'd play uh, yeah. You know, what's that song? If you're gone, <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, if my dad can sing this, I can sing this. And then, and then I'll and then I'll and then I'll sing line to heaven. I'll be I can hit, I can hit this one. <laughs> if I mess this up, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, we'll be back for more. No more of heaven after this commercial break. All right, and we're back with heaven season finale, guys. Ito na. So okay, kumakanta ka ng If You're Gone, ikakaraoke ka. But when you sing karaoke, you, are you the type of person at your age of 25 or maybe 24 who can say, you know what? I'm okay to make fun of myself. I'm not taking myself seriously anymore. Are you there? Or- I'd, I'd say so and I'd say being a rapper helps. Okay, put the mic closer to you or not. Yeah. Having my own, uh, my niche. Mm. Yeah, Let's talk about that. Naalala ko dati nung baby ka. Hindi naman baby, nung bata ka, we would, we would um, look at billboards uh-huh. and we would freestyle from billboards and that was a trip. Yon gusto ko yon. That was fun. Yeah, because you, it taught me to think on my feet. Yes. And we would do it to the point where it would just become second nature. Mm. So, you know, I'd, I'd say that that helped out a little bit. Right. And it was also a fun little bonding thing too yeah. because, you know, it... Hip hop's not really your thing. No, so you would make me listen to Ti and all that stuff. Yeah, and, oh, and, then, and then from time to time you'd be like, "Why are you listening to that?" Uh-huh. And then you know, you'd, Cuddy, you'd, yeah. have your, you'd have your little Clint Eastwood moment to yeah. get out my get out my yard and all that. But uh, you know, it was a good way for us to bond. You know, you'd show you'd get really crazy over like Chicken Foot and mm-hmm. showing me stuff like that. Yeah, but it, it's interesting, you know, because prior to releasing music. You know my own music. You know I was in a band in high school. Right, right. It was Mad Minute. It was with uh, with Caesar, Chris, and Ethan. Yes. And we were playing around Hollywood, and we were just like these teenagers who were seventeen, turning eighteen, going around Sunset Boulevard, playing House of Blues. Whiskey, Why were you Go-Go. in a band? And yeah, you know, at the time, well, I was I was part of the jazz band at the time. Yes. I was playing the drums when, you know, it's funny actually. Like, let me rewind a little bit to even how I started learning the drums. Um, when I had joined jazz band for the first time, it was my sophomore year. Yes. And I only knew like one or two beats, right? Maybe I played <laughs> at church like once or twice. Right. Feeling myself over, do, do, da, do, do, da, do, do, da. right? Feeling myself over something like that. Maybe I'd be able to play rain down from, from top to bottom, uh-huh. mess up a lot, but like whatever. I was like, oh, this is cool. Let me go, let me go, you know, take up jazz band in high school. Come to find out, first day, I'm there. It's an audition only class. Oh. Right, but I had it on my schedule and it was like, did you, did you sign up for this class? (laughs) And it was me and my friend Simon at the time. Uh, Simon, he he knew like a few chords on the guitar. And yeah, I knew like two beats. But I was talking to uh to our music director, you know, Mr. Reese. Mr. Reese. And <laughs> and he takes me into the uh into one of the music rooms and he's like, Oh, show me what you could play. Uh, 
you know, man. I think at the time he was trying to, he put something easy. It was sold Bossa Nova. Okay. Right. By Quincy Jones. And it's a very, very simple song to play. He puts the music sheet on there, right? The sheet music. <laughs> you know, damn well I couldn't read. I was like, okay, okay, okay. Mr. Reese, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm looking at. Um, I only know how to play like a few beats. So he, he's like, show me what you could play. This is jazz band, right? The whole time I'm thinking about your philosophy. Make sure you make sure that one and three you got solid boom yes. on the kick and hit that rim shot. <laughs> jazz band. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> uh, thankfully, uh, I don't know if it was the moxie or the cojones or just, you know, ignorance is bliss. I was able to stay on the roster. Until you, know, you I, graduated. Until I graduated. And yeah, I was playing percussion. Right. I was playing some conga, <laughs> playing some cowbell, playing some triangle. Uh, I, got to, I got to just study behind uh, Noah, who was very, very, very kind with uh, taking me under his wing and you know, I don't really talk to him much nowadays, but I'm always going to be grateful. Yes. I'm always going to be grateful that he was very patient with me. And even uh, Jojo, uh, who was the drummer in my junior year, the principal drummer in my junior year, you know, she was very, very, very patient. Yeah. And I'm always going to be grateful for that because any type of question, stupid or, you know, uh, well-timed, she was willing to answer for me. Mm. And that's one thing that I'm always going to have is gratitude for the upperclassmen that had the patience to uh, help me out. Nakakatawa, because people think, people, people actually thought, ako nagturo sa yung mag-drums. And I keep telling people, ah, ah, may tinuro ako sa kanya. Man, you had so much drama at the time, you had no time to do that. <laughs> you, as, as much as I would ask, hey dad, teach me something. Because you teach me like yeah. a quest love beat, yeah. right? Yeah. And I still know it to this day and even like some simple song yep. stuff. But you didn't really have time. No, you had too much down, on your plate. Yeah, to sit down, no. You know, and, and as much as I would have loved that, you know, looking back at it, I'm, I'm grateful for what you have taught me. Because you, you taught me not to play the drums, yeah. but you did teach me how to play the music. Yes. And I think as a song writer, somebody that writes his own songs Which and all that is stuff, who you are. I, I take pride in that because I have an understanding of, okay, okay, the, um, this, is, this is a good way to attack the beat. You're right. You know, oh, this is a good cadence. Okay, okay. I, I, have, a, I have an understanding of feel, groove. Yeah what's in pocket mm. if i'm going uh slightly ahead, ahead of the uh, beat mm -hmm. it's done on purpose right or if i'm trying to get back at it yeah you know that's that that all comes from what you point out on the spot and you do it in passing yeah. you'll just listen to a song and oh did you hear that right we'll be listening to um to like bamboo uh, yeah oh right yeah. And then, Mercado, no? exactly right, and oh, <laughs> and you would show me as the music plays. Yes, you know, and you'd say, "Listen to this, listen to how all the all the musicians are play, are serving the music." Yep. You know, even the part where it goes from four four to six eight. Yes. You know, listen to this. Listen to this breakdown right here. Listen to the groove. You know, listen to how the, the fill-ins, you know, it's not overdone. Right. You know, less is more. And we weren't really listening to the drums. We were listening to, to it. The music. To co cohesively. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and that's how I like to look at it. You know, because it's interesting, right? Hip-hop is such a competitive uh, genre. It's cutthroat. Yeah. It's in yeah. your face. It's very braggadocious. You know, it's very... If if you if you get offended easily, it's not for you. Ah, if, you know if 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 you yeah you know, if you if you get turned off by bragging and angas and all that stuff, it's not for you. So walang pikon, bawal ang pikon. Bawal yung pikon. But let's say if I'm doing a feature, I'm not. I'm thinking, okay, how can I elevate this person's music? I'm not. I'm not here to to trash you. Yeah, I'm here to. Elevate what you already have. Pay yeah. homage, or, really. or or also, you know, what can I do to have you elevate your pen? 
Okay. You know, I'm not here to to thrash you at your own song, but I'm here to, all right, I want us to bring out the best in each other. And I think that's the best way to go about it. I realize that artists are, are most fun to work with when we're supporting one another. Yeah. We're bringing, out, no. we're bringing out the best in one another and we genuinely want to see each other shine. You know, you know keyword that genuinely. Exactly. And that's hard to find, by the way, because everybody, well, not everybody, that's, that's wrong. A lot of artists are out there um, just looking for an opportunity. They're opportunists. In, manggagamit lang ng iba. Unfortunately, in the wrong, in the wrong yeah. way. Yeah. You know, and there's a word for that. It's uh, clout chasers. Cloud chasers. Yeah, you know, because they're just there uh, to take advantage of the shine that you have. Right. And unfortunately, that's just that goes into every other aspect, whether it's music or just at the workplace, mm. you know, or life in general. You know, there are people that are going to take advantage of you, and there are people that are going to be envious. And there are people that are going to be jealous, but there are also going to be people that are willing to help. There are also going to be willing. Yeah. There are, there are also going to be people willing to give you the shirt on their back because they see that you're really trying your best to keep it together and they just want to give you a helping hand. And the best thing is to stay true to your principles, stay true to, to your character and, you know, know yourself when they say know yourself. And that's the biggest thing because it goes back to, uh, to, to knowing who you are, what you've come from. And back then, I used to be so focused on that external validation. Ah. You know, I, and it gets frustrating. Yeah, pagano, it, diba? it gets so frustrating because I wanted, that, uh, I wanted approval from my peers. Yes. That, you know, that turned out to not be as cool as I thought it you know not they turned out to not be as cool as i thought they were when i first met them like some right. of them some of right them. right right you know and and then i would and i would like slave away as far as you know putting in work being up to like 5 a.m working on something and you know just to impress the wrong crowd and then i realized that my center was in the wrong place my center was you know whether it was enemy centered when i was angry about a certain thing or yeah. whether I was friend centered with the wrong crowd, trying to impress the wrong people, you know, getting into things that I shouldn't have gotten into and that ended up doing more harm than good and, and ended up being less productive and sent me down a path that, you know, looking back, I could have spent more time doing more productive things. So yun, pag usapan natin yung hindsight. Because your hindsight is good. Other people ignore their hindsight. Pero you're the type of person who assesses the situation after the situation is done or after the decision has been made. Because that's where all the gems are. I hope they're in yun. Because that's true. That's, that's where true. all the gems are. People want to suppress those things. Yon, let's talk about that. It's easier to do that. Papano mo, and it takes, it takes humility to admit to yourself, kahit wag na sa ibang tao, but there are other people who are so full of pride, they will not admit even to themselves na mali yung ginawa nila and still be on that wrong road. How are you able to pivot? How are you able to come to terms with your own mistakes? And then, turn. By accepting that I'm not perfect, by, accept, by, forg by being able to forgive myself, by being capable of doing so, mm by being capable of forgiving others that have done me wrong and realizing I've done other people wrong as well. Mm. I've done people wrong that I care about, thinking that I was doing something right. You know, even through all the times that we had our, our, our struggles, I never doubted if you loved me. Uh -huh. Even when you weren't treating me the best. And when I take that perspective and apply it to myself and other people, well, now I get to this state where I just control the things that I could control. Right. And that's now. Right. I could be 
easily fixated and ruminate on things that happened a year ago, Mm -hmm. two years ago, mistakes that I made. But am I really going to be able to rewind the time? Correct. No. No. So parang waste of time. It's almost like I'm putting myself through it again. Yeah. Yeah. Get you know, it. And that is just self-defeating thoughts. That's just a self-defeating task. When I could use that as a stepping stone. Right. To where I'm trying to be. Kapag parang lesson. It's a lesson. L's into lessons. You know, that's that's how I that's how I have to look at it for me to move on because you know it better than anyone else. I've messed up and made mistakes that if I could if I could yeah. reverse I would. Right. And pero, it, pero those mistakes you know what nga, as an outsider looking at your life. Ko pucha, those mistakes were necessary. Those mistakes were necessary, but if you <laughs> But as an outsider looking at my life and looking at those mistakes, you'll be like, "Damn, how the hell did how did he forgive himself for how how right. did he how did right. he move forward from right. that?" Right? Mm. It it wasn't easy. No. Yeah, I I I wake up every morning telling myself today's a new day. Yeah. Yesterday's yesterday. Yep. I may or may not get tomorrow. But you have today. But I gotta do what I can today. Yes. To plant the seed. So if tomorrow is granted to me, at least I know darn well that I did everything I could to nurture today. Ako nga, ano eh. You know what? Based on what you just said, because I say that also, sabi ko, and this is me now, huh? this is me and my mortality and the things that are going through my head because of what happened to Tito Louie. By the way, to, to you guys, Tito Louis is uh, my brother, his uncle, na, who recently passed away. So, I look at you and I look at your siblings and I'm like, okay, I have one adult child and it's awesome to see you where you are. You know, para sa akin, flapping your wings is better than not flapping at all. All right. Diba? Kumbaga, may mga ibang anak dyan na adults na hanggang ngayon nasa poder pa ng mga magulang nila who are too scared to even flap their own wings. And then I look at your siblings who are still chicklets. And I'm like, Lord, I need, I need the lifespan to see these four kids grow up to be like the first kid. So better, that, hopefully better. That's, that's, and, and I think that's... Um, that's, w- that's why I find it very important for us to have this constant and consistent communication. Yeah. Because I, I always want to be in the loop. And you've been guiding me in raising the four kids, huh? What not to do, daddy? <laughs> or you'd bring something up and I just kind of, you know, uh, passively uh, veto. Yeah. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Right. Uh, maybe, maybe not so much. You remember when you tried that on me? Right, right, right. Because again, when, when, when we were both learning, it was single dad, single son. Yun yung ano natin eh. Diba? Kung baga parang, you were learning as I was learning and we were both, I threw both of us into a situation where, okay, who has the instruction manual? Nami! <laughs> Nami! So yun ang problema natin dalawa nun. But now, as a 25-year-old man, what are you looking forward to? Like you have a girlfriend, may future, kahit hindi ako nangihingi ng apo sa'yo, you know, at the back of my head, I'm like, what would it be like for this guy to have his own kid? Hindi mo ba naisip yung mga bagay? You know what I'm looking forward to? I'm looking forward to being able to give my siblings some pretty cool Christmas gifts this year. Uh, and it, and that was a goal that I set for myself last year. Just little things, right? Right. We take things a day at a time and enjoy the moment, live in the moment. It's it's interesting given the whole uh, global situation right yeah. now, but you know, being able to be fortunate enough to enjoy a holiday with my siblings. We had that last year, no? Exactly. It hit a little light bulb in my head mm. of what's important. And there are these love languages and gift giving is a love language. Yes. Typically I'm good with affirming through words, you know, words of affirmation, but 
seeing the smiles on all their faces and knowing that two of them are going to be turning 13 I know. soon, right? I want to be, I, I want to be able to provide my share of things and, and also not that material things are important, but it gives me reason to work harder. Right. It gives me, you know, because the, the byproduct of, you know, I could set that goal yeah. right, and it's not, it's not unrealistic at all. It, it's very, it, if anything, it's very vague, right? But it's very, very reachable. And the reason I said it like that is because it's going to shift my mindset as to, okay, these are the things that I'm going to have to do to be able to comfortably give them that because I'm paying okay. for rent. I'm on my own. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got car payments. I got to pay for my own stuff. Can you please tell them, I'm not, I, I don't give you money for, for your life. Eh. I mean, I'll have dinner here. Yeah. You know, always welcome. You still have a bed yeah. here. Exactly. And not, you know, but I, our relationship's better that way. Right. And it's, it's nice to have a little bit of that space and that freedom, especially, yeah. especially since, you know, we all go through our hardships and stuff like that. I like being able to just phone you whenever I need you. Alam mo ba? Yeah. I, 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 I told um, our viewers and our listeners about that, about your bed. Your bed is the perfect example. Eh. So, sabi ko sa kanila, and I'll repeat it for, for those of you who missed it and for you. I love the fact that you have a bed in the house. And I love the fact that your bed is empty. <laughs> yeah, I think you told me that like what, two weeks ago? Mm. Because if your bed is empty, it means you're flying. Yeah. And that bed is your bed in case you have a broken wing or need a pit exactly I need a pit stop pit stop because that's what parents are especially me and you Kumbaga, I take pride in the fact that pag hinanap nila ikaw sa akin I go that's uh, Kalen's bed that's Chase's bed that's Raiden's bed and that's Heaven's bed Heaven's bed yeah always always but it's vacant for a reason because the guy is busy doing his own thing. Exactly. And I like to think about this, uh, just being surrounded by you guys as a place of, san as a sanctuary. Yeah. As a place where I could stop thinking about what's going on outside of here for a mm, moment. Mm. It's a place to kind of recuperate. Yeah. Uh, rest. Rest. Rest lang, di ba? Kumbaga parang, okay. I'm out. Listen, to, out. listen to your stories. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe dirty hot dogs. Maybe listen to a story that you yeah. told me five years ago. Again and again and again. And then learn something new from it that I didn't right. catch the first time I heard it. And you notice I keep coming back. Yeah. And I'll just listen because I want to enjoy that. I want to be able to, to, be able to tell my kids one day, like, hey, you know, your Lolo, your Lolo did this, right? You know, and there and there might be there might be situ there might be situations wherein, you know, who knows where I'm gonna be? Who knows where we're gonna be in the next five years, ten years, fifteen yeah. years, twenty years? Everything is a big question mark, right? right? But we could just do what we can to enjoy who we have, what we have, and I don't want to have any regrets. Wondering, oh man, I wish I had a better relationship with my dad. Oh man, I wish I had a better relationship with my mom because me and my mom were cool. Right. You know what I mean? I could I could FaceTime her. I know that if I FaceTime my mom who lives in the Philippines after work at like 6:30, I know it's yeah. like I know it's like <clears throat> 10 a.m. over there, right? In the Philippines a day ahead. Yeah. And it's like a it's a respectable hour or or mama. Yeah. So I think uh, I think we got a little commercial break coming up <laughs> right now. So Okay, we'll be back. All right, and we're back. Wow. So let's talk about mama. Mama is your grandmother. Exactly. Mama. Mama Malu. She's I the most you. abused uh, person. And shout out to you, mama. Pag sinay kong abuse, kahit ako eh. Ikaw, ako. Pero especially you. Because you're the first apo of Lola. Mo. Her favorite, of course. Yeah. And I feel like I'm that. 
you know, like on Gina Joke, eh, because she hated my guts when when I when I came in. Pero I know that hindi hindi si Lex ang gusto niya. Ako talaga gusto niya. <laughs> I don't know. I think they're building quite the rapport right now. I know, I know. Pero let's talk about Mama. Because she was very crucial also in your life. Even up to the... Kahit, kahit yung tuhod niya wasak na wasak na, she would go the extra mile just for her unang apo. I always tell people, I'm a big grandma's boy. Okay. You know, and... Even... Ma- Mama is like... <laughs> She's just the type of person that, you know, I, I just wrap my arm around her and, you know, be super cuddly with and, you know, let her know, hey, mama, I love you so much. You know, I don't mind being a little goofball around her. Up to now. Oh, to this day. Right. You know, if I were in the Philippines, I would I'd be letting her know, you know, because every time I FaceTime her, I'm letting her know how much I miss her. And then, I, and then I always have to be ready to smile because when you're on FaceTime or on uh, Facebook Messenger, the video chat, you know, they could uh, yeah, do yeah, little yeah. Snapchats uh-huh. or no, snapshots. So mama's always ready to take pictures. She'll be smiling. And I'm like, oh, shoot, we're going to take a picture? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like mid-ugly face. Just, um, just, oh, wait, let's do that again. And then she'll post the one that... Uh, that I don't like and then I'll tell her oh mama post the other one and she'll take that out and then post the nice one and be like spoiled oh, cool, we're good. spoiled yeah. spoiled but I miss her cooking so much me too yeah yeah I know you do that pochero the pochero yes now people there was a time <clears throat> there was a time people would ask me asan si heaven kasi nasa Pilipinas si Geneva and ikaw nasa Los Angeles so nasa si heaven and I would tell them nasa Seattle and they would go nakanino and I would tell them, oh, nasa, nasa family niya sa Seattle. And they would say, sino yung family niya? So I go, sino Casey? And people would, be, eto ha, yan, kayong mga nanonood na feeling nyo abandonado tong si Heaven. People actually think that your mom was worse in leaving you in Seattle. And I'm like, I think that's very offensive because the Millers, are your family as well? I mean, that did, that certainly left scars. You know, like, let's be real. I, I could have had a closer relationship with my mom at that time. Right. Uh, my mom was very young, you know, and most would call it their, their prime. Yeah. Right, their prime age. Yes. And she also had a dream to chase at the time, and she had opportunities in other places that looking back in hindsight i'm turning 25 you're 25 when you had me yes right i don't have plans of having a kid right now um not until i feel that i'd be able to provide not just for myself but for for a second person right so i i take into i take into the into account the perspective that when you know you went you guys went your separate ways you were 28 she yeah. was only 23. Yes. Yes. No. Yes, because I was, she was 20 when she had me. 23, 28. Five, oh, five years ago. I was three years old. Yeah. And then she, she met Casey when I was three years old, around there. Right. Yeah, and then he raised me up until I was, what, 14? Yep. And I'm always going to be thankful you know, our relationship might not be as close as we once were because, of course, he's got he's got his own kid now. Mm. He's got another wife, see, uh, see Tita Steph. Yeah, and I'm happy for him. Yeah, and that was at for a time that was tough, right? Because there was a little bit of jealousy there because you were the only kid. There. Yeah, you know, and I and it's not like I was blood, right? Right. So a part of me was like, okay, this could wash away sometime soon, and there was definitely some sadness and all that stuff that I had to grow from and. Uh, mature from and you know now it's still I'll, I'll let him know like hey I love you uh, hey uh, happy happy birthday right 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 Merry Christmas all the important stuff yeah and the family that I have there Lola yeah his mom uh, Tita Colby if anything we're closer you know, you know? You've, you've kept that relationship to the point that yeah. it actually spilled over to me exactly and this is the thing that bums me out though 
and because people the don't rela- understand that. No, thing. because the relationship that I have with Tito Colby was a relationship that I that I wanted to be able to have one day with Tito Louis. Right. And what made me really sad about his passing was that I'll never be able to have that. Yeah. You know, the best thing that I could do right now is every decision that I make with the feeling that hey, he might be watching. Oh, nga, no. You know, let's make him proud this way. Right. You know, how could I honor him this way? And that boils down and that all boils down to, to principle and character at the end of the day. What are you doing when other people aren't watching? What are you doing when people aren't looking? What are you doing when you're just all alone in your thoughts? Comes down to your heart. And, you know, if whether you believe in heaven, hell, you know, afterlife, paradise. Yeah. You know, I have my faith and and I believe that he is looking down. Then I feel like, hey, maybe this is my chance to be closer than ever. To right? my, so, LA, no? yeah, just, and it just encourages me to do better things, to be better, to continue to work on myself and to not give up. Because that's, that's a battle that I face every day is you know, it's, it's very easy to quit on what I'm doing. But then the repercussions of that and the consequences are, you know, I won't be able to pay my bills. I won't be able to put food on my table. I won't be able to, you know, get my girlfriend something nice for a little anniversary or, or a date night. Right. Or I'll be stressed out. I don't want that. So your priority talagang ang galing, no? Because knowing you as a kid, who couldn't even clean his own room is now organized in such a way that you have everything that you have at the perfect time. Sa tingin mo ba kaya dumating yun because you were ready for, for it? Like your own apartment, your, your car, your girlfriend, your work, your, your new opportunities. I would say so. I'd say I, I grew and matured in areas that were that were lacking mm. I think back then I was very short tempered my biggest weakness was not being patient enough right and I think I turned that into one of my biggest strengths I think I'm very composed around chaos yeah and I think when there is peace I don't allow seeking chaos and havoc i don't seek that as a default correct i just enjoy it let's talk about that huh? as a default other people kasi are scared eh, because sanay sila sa na puro chaos sa buhay nila. i used to too so pag may peace it's like where's the chaos right paano mo na wala sa paano mo na bura yun? i breathe so that's conscious na Okay, is this piece really happening? Is it really mine? When's shit gonna hit the fan? Oh uh, yeah. So pa, do you do you still do you still ask those questions or in accept mo na yung fact na? Take yeah, muna. Yeah, I'm entitled nice. to peace. Like oh. this is nice. Yeah. Of course, I get anxious. Yeah, you know, but once, but it comes down to self awareness. Okay, yon. Knowing okay. yourself. You, know, you mentioned right now that you're in the depressed phase. Of the grieving process. And I called you, right? Yeah. And there's somebody that deals with depression. You know, everybody deals with it differently. Right. So what works for me might not work for you. Right. You know, the pill that you're taking might not work for me. But this but another thing that might not work for you works for me. Correct. You know, so the important thing is knowing how to cope. That's why I said, you know, I'm just glad that you're going through the process. Because there are people that will just down a bottle, you know, take use self medicate, mm. and back then I was self medicating way more than I needed to. Right. You know, the biggest thing that I'm proud of this year is knowing when to stop, not smoking, you know, not using substances, and just being my clearest self, having clarity is so so peaceful and is clarity is having a purpose part of having clarity you know what's interesting is when i was really really like 
churning out music. Like when I was releasing a song every week, right? I released a song every week for 52 weeks. Right. I was doing it with a purpose. You know, I wanted, I told my mom, hey mom, you know, she's, she was letting me live rent free at the time, right? When she was still here in the States. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to give this music thing a, like a full go for a year. You know, and to give her peace of mind, I broke it down into 52 weeks. Right, right. Because right. anybody could say, oh, I'm going to give it my best shot for a year. Yeah. And, and so... Not to take away from any anything else. If anything, um, I feel like there came a point where, you know, I was just sort of doing it to do it. But you know, there was a purpose there. I wanted to, I wanted to break it down in a way, wherein I could keep track of the progress. Right. And there is a purpose. There is a reason why I was doing it. I wanted to let my mom know that, you know, I'm giving it my best, and I, I was letting myself know that. I could finish what I started because one of the biggest things before was I couldn't finish what I started. I dropped out of school. Mm. You know, I was very lazy, always procrastinating. And when you're releasing a song every week and Pag to to, you're, for, for you're, 52 weeks, you're moving on to the next one. You got to go yeah. on to the next one. Yeah. And you're holding yourself accountable. And now all of a sudden you're develop, you're, you're building people, you're building a fan base of people that are actually keeping tabs and keeping track right. of your releases. Right. Heck, you're 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 probably having people out there that don't like you that much that are wondering, oh, is he going to give up now? Uh huh. And then there was a point wherein I would release songs just to make a statement. Right. I would make I would do it to make a statement like, hey, I'm here, bring it, you know, and and then. Eventually, I would mature from that phase, and then it went from, uh, I ain't got nothing much. To, I ain't really trying to prove anything. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to give myself peace of mind. And yeah. it, it went to the very, very, very first reason I even started putting out music in the first place um, was to get back on track. was because it provided me an outlet, an artistic, creative outlet for me to express myself and with the possibility that what I say can connect with somebody who might be going through the same thing as I was. Right. And, you know, whether it was my first EP, you know, I personally feel I wasn't really ready to, to put out music at that time, you know, but shout out to, shout out to Uncle H-Bomb. For, uh, for giving me a platform to express myself and, yeah. you know, be able to make a statement that, you know, I do have, uh, I do have artistic capabilities of my, of my own, you know, and he, he definitely extended uh, his platform for me to be able to show people what I got. Right. And give myself a little bit of confidence because when I started really releasing music, that kind of gave me a little bit of an identity that was different from you guys. Yeah. And I think that is something that, that I'm always going to be thankful for. So in confidence, I'm intrigued. It was, an, it was more so identity. Right. Because, because growing up, I was always your guy's son. Uh-huh. You know, I, it was, oh, why don't, this, was, this is a very common thing that I would hear. Why don't you just go back home to the Philippines and be an artist? Ano nga sagot don? A lot of people right now are probably wondering the same thing. And it's like, do you even know what I do? Ganda. Like, what if, like, what if I just like to play chess or something like that? You know, not that I'm some chess yeah. master or whatever, but what if I'm not even into music? So talagang <laughs> ang hirap na they branded you as someone because you're someone else's son. Yeah, but so, but the way that I look at it too is, you know, maybe if you're the kid of a doctor, or the kid of a lawyer, or they expect the kid, it to be the same thing too. Exactly, or you know, you hear it a lot too, like children of preachers or children of of police officers, yeah. and they end up going a slippery slope. Yeah. And what's interesting is I was one of those kids that went a slippery slope, had to make my way back. Fortunate enough to be able to do that and and take my losses and 
and learn from them. Right. But, you know, looking back, I mean, you could be salty. You know, I could easily, I could easily uh, take offense to it. But at the same time, you know, people are going to, people are just going to talk to talk. Ito ang tanong. When did you stop blaming your parents? Because, yun ang napansin ko sa'yo eh. Sasabit ka, you'll make a mistake. But you've stopped blaming your mom, me, your other dad. When did, Tita Tiny, when did you stop blaming your parents? Hmm. It's a good question. Just because I, I feel like I didn't I'm sort of a late bloomer in a way where I didn't really put everything together until maybe the past two or two and a half years. And I'm not, I'm not too prideful to say it. You know, some people, they figure it out at like 15 when maybe their, their, their dad is not in the picture and they had to grow up a lot faster and, you know, they weren't as fortunate. You know, and or they might have been the type of person that, um, you know, saw how you were going through your, your stuff and said, oh, no, I don't want that. Right, right, right. But rather, I, I took it the um, I took it a different approach, the approach that was less effective and productive and was like using it as an excuse, using mm-hmm. it as something that was holding me down. And, oh, why is this happening to me, that, that kind of like self-victimization, right, victimizing right, right. myself. Right, right. But it was when I stopped doing that. That you that, suddenly... Yeah, because all of a sudden I had this... <laughs> I, f- I felt it wasn't... My responsibility didn't feel it was to you guys anymore. It felt it was to myself. So, yeah, exactly. And I had to hold myself accountable. Yon, yon. Like, you know, these bills aren't going to pay itself. <laughs> these dreams aren't going to fulfill itself. And just seeing... And understanding that that if I want something to happen, and you know, and I'm and I'm constantly blaming you guys for it. Well, what if I took the time that I spent blaming you guys for it and applied it to where what actually needs to be worked on? Right. Well, I'd probably make a lot more steps in the right direction, won't I? If I wasn't blaming you guys that as much as I did, or if I wasn't sulking as much as I did my sophomore year, or whenever I felt the need to to victimize myself, yeah, you know, I would have figured this out sooner. But it took life humbling me for me to figure that out. Pero ang galing, yung trajectory mo naman ngayon is well, fast. Well, it's rapid now because accountability goes a long way. Exponential owning, and growth more. Owning yeah. those those moments <laughs> in my life right. took me to us having this conversation right yeah. now. And also understanding what it was that I was actually feeling. You know, understanding that, oh shoot, I'm I got depression and I'm figuring this out at what, twenty two? Like, okay, okay, I didn't figure, I didn't find this out when I was 15 because I, I was feeling some type of way when I was 12 years old. Correct. Keep in mind. Yes. Right? And then even more so when I left Washington. But, okay, I now know that I'm dealing with this issue, right? Now that I know that I'm dealing with it, let me face it. Yun, yun, eh, no? Let me acknowledge it. Yeah. Let me not be in denial. All right, now what can I do? Now what can I do from here? And I think looking at that as a starting point, as a, as a good benchmark, or I don't know if benchmark's the word, but just knowing that it's there, I could acknowledge it. And then grow from there. And then grow from there. Yeah. I could look at myself in the mirror not be so hard on myself. Yeah. Give my, you know, treat myself with some respect, you some knew, love. Right, right. And being kinder to myself because, you know, I would, I wasn't just, I wasn't just bitter when, when I was growing up. You know, I, 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 w- I would just, I would just think the sky was falling. 
I was like, why was why was it all happening to me? Correct. But now it's uh, okay. Everybody's going through something. I'm not the only one dealing with something. Yeah. Heck, there are people going through much much worse. True. And if you're watching this and you got a a monitor in front of you and you have internet, suerte kapa. Man, that's you know that's some that's some sort of a blessing yeah. right there. You have some sort of luxury. So that's just. But again, you know, it, I think it it takes people. People have to figure that out on their own time. I can't just go here and chastise somebody for not being grateful. I I can't just be here and chastise somebody for being bitter right. or jealous because you know what. I felt that way before. I felt envious of somebody else's pasture, of their their front lawn. I've been in those shoes. But do I really know what that person went through to get to where they are? No. I could only project my experiences and look at their fancy whatever and think, man, why does he have that and I don't? Right. Well, do I really know? Everything that's going on in that person's life. Pero ang galing ay may may ano ka na, may introspect ka na na. Alam mo yun? You've, you've developed this this uh, second layer, third layer questioning. Na o oh, nga no? Paano yun nabot? Ba't siya may Tesla? Ibis na ingit ka. Ano kaya trabaho nun para maabot niya yung? Where do you attribute that to the books that you've read? To I think it's a combination of a lot of things. But you seeked out to learn more. You know the difference. Other people are stuck up where they are. Ikaw, you sought and found, you know, resources to help you grow. Yeah, I th- well, because <coughs> I didn't really go to. Man, I did. I did like a year and a half of community college. Yeah, but I didn't go to a university. I, yeah, you know, I feel like I. It it, it wasn't intriguing. It wasn't in. <sighs> Not really intriguing, but it, I didn't have the aspiration to go. Okay, right. But so I, I figured, okay, if I'm not gonna, if I'm not gonna go to class, I might as well learn from somewhere. Pero itong itong impressive sao, and not just because you're my son, but if even if you weren't my son, I would say I would still say the same thing. Hindi ka na college, and one of the major things that you learn in college is critical thinking, and that's something that you innately have. You're a critical thinker. May mga tao who will just go through the motions of life. Pero witnessing you grow up and witnessing you now as an adult, meron kang ano eh, critical thinking. Paano mo nakuha yun? How did you develop that? How are you able to think critically to be able to pivot? I mean, you've messed up, yeah. Part yun eh, but I think a lot of it came from... I would say that I started developing that when i started talking less and listening more uh, right parang school you got <laughs> two ears school. one mouth <laughs> listen think and if you have something to contribute say something but if not then take a commercial break <laughs> and breathe And come back to it, and maybe you have a question, right? That you could ask. That will only improve your understanding of what you're listening to. Nice. We'll take a commercial break. So na natin advice ni Heaven. We'll be back after this. And we're back. Okay. Kanin, so ang dami natin na pag-usapan with regard to your life and how your life can impact other people's lives. Now, you have four, you have five siblings, right? Are you consciously aware that all five siblings are looking up to you? Yes. Do you feel responsible? Yeah. I do. Okay. And I, and I, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. I feel responsible, especially after the last big mistake, mm. because 
it gives me because when when I'm down on myself, this is okay. This is why I feel responsible, right? When I'm dealing with depression, right? For example, it's so easy for me to hate myself. Right. It's so easy to go down that mental rabbit hole of just constantly beating myself up. Right. But when you got a bigger purpose than yourself. Are you in that? And that bigger purpose comes in the form of five little siblings. You have what? Three? Three little brothers. Two sisters. Two little sisters. That makes it easier to be hopeful. To be excited. To enjoy. Right. And, you know, one of my biggest things this year was to be more involved. Mm-hmm. Because last year I was just so focused on putting out music. And kailangan mo yun eh. Because yeah. that's self-development mo eh. Absolutely. And I learned a lot about myself. I treated every song like it was a journal. Right. Right. And whatever I was feeling, I just put it out there. And if I grew from it or whether i still felt the same you know i had some sort of reminder i had some sort of benchmark i had it it, it was like a journal you know because i also journal right i have a moleskin i write down my thoughts i write down how my day went i write down uh how i was thinking how i am thinking Mm. and it helps me think more intentionally does that make sense a lot of sense i mean we'll 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 discuss that because yung intentionally and you need Mag- malaking word yun eh because that means you're in control kesa yung tinatanggap mo na lang lahat and all that mm-hmm. di ba? because it, it comes down to what I said earlier as well you gotta be kinder to yourself right because I acknowledge what I'm dealing with correct okay now what do you do from there now I'm const- now I'm writing down all of my experiences I'm writing I'm, I'm whether I'm singing something rapping something I always remember how I felt when I wrote it. I always mm. remember how I felt when I recorded it. Because it came from my mind. Right. It came from my experience. And I put it out there and I pressed play and I'm like, oh wow. <laughs> That's cool. You know, like how like how did you how do you feel whenever you listen to uh, will I survive? And weird. Uh, oh, wait, no, that's wow. Kailan Man. That's Dina Dina Kwa Kwa Asupa, yeah. right? Weird. Or will I survive? And and Kailan Man. Yeah. And even <clears> Line <throat> to Heaven. And okay. and that came from loss. That came from tragedy. tragedy. <clears throat> yeah, so, and and looking back and listening to living my life and performing that. And then, how did you feel when you first heard it from Tito Louis and Ninong Ochot? You know what? Okay. Because of you, no? Because of you. When I... Living My Life to me is a good song, but it's not a favorite song of mine. Mm-hmm. It, it's fun that Tito Louie and Tito Ochot were, Nino Ochot were able to, to create that song. But now that they're both gone, the sentiment. Not only that, even the lyrics. The, and the lyrics and the oh. memory. Yeah, right? Oh. Parang, parang hindi ko lang kung ako ba kumakanta para sa kanilang dalawa. Living My Life Thinking of You Every Day. Hoping next time that, that would mean you would stay, you no would matter stay. how hard, how much I try. You, you guys stay. had a music video for that too. Yeah, yeah. Na it's it's so I it's so coincidental na yung dalawang tao ng sulat ng kanta nyan are both gone, and the song is about that. And so you gave me that different perspective. Speaking of uh, speaking of which, also I I have to acknowledge this. Your your emotions started. Paco's place. Not not the not the essence of Paco's place, but the um, existence of Paco's place. Okay, what people don't under, don't know was so Paco's place <clears throat> is a brainchild, but it wasn't ready until you had to call me and say, "Dad, can I use your your can I use Paco's place to record a video?" Yeah, I need to shoot some content. Right, and I was like, "Oh yeah, you can, you can, you can use this facility to shoot your content." Yes, but real quick, real quick, before we continue down that rabbit hole, the responsibilities of having of having yeah. siblings, right? That comes from you know having a greater purpose. You're having 
ha- living for something greater right. than myself. Right. And hoping that you know I leave you know something worth being inspired by to them. Is there pressure that they have to look up to you? I mean, they don't have to look up to me, but right? But you know they do, right? And you know what? You how how do you tell them? That, uh, you know that, what? You know what, uh, brothers and sisters, you don't have to look up to me. And you and you know what? That that makes it easier to hold myself accountable. Uh, that makes it so much easier to let go of my pride. You know, admit where I'm wrong. And really, the essence of being a man about it is not just facing it, acknowledging it. See, this is where you really. This is a proud moment for me because now while you're talking and answering the question, I was answering the question also in my head and magkaiba batay ng sagot because when, when I was raising up the, the five other siblings I had, I wasn't really focused on them looking up to me. To me, it was just an obligation na kuya nyo, ngayon pa lang ako natututo to be an example you had a different you had but you did you had different responsibilities though you know you you lost both your parents at an age where they were very very young yeah yeah and i'm very fortunate to not have the same experience as you did amen you know and though back when i was growing up Back when I was your age, I had, you know, this was what I was doing and you're complaining about that. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to complain about that. You know, that's not something that I, uh, I'm jealous of. But at the same time, I respect how, how you were able to rise above that rubble. Mine is different. You know, I'm going to everything had to be the same. Exactly. And, you know, they're they're all growing up so fast yeah and they're they all have their own unique personality and it's yes. awesome ain't it like yes. cassidy's my youngest sister yes and she could put all the brothers in their place isn't that crazy uh-huh she'll call us out on our bs right cool yeah you said that you would play with me for 10 minutes <laughs> it's only been six minutes <laughs> I read analog clock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she didn't say the last part, but still, though, she will keep track. Yeah. And then, and then, when the the last time, I believe it was Christmas, she told me, "Oh, can can you play with me just twenty minutes?" I was in there for like forty five minutes, right? She was making up this whole story with yeah. like her little playhouse, right? And I go, "Hey, I'm gonna go hang out with uh with your queer Kaylin now, right?" She goes. Oh, you just give me 15 minutes? <laughs> Cassidy, you asked for 20. I gave you 45. She goes, but it's just 15 minutes. I was there for another 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, because one day she's going to grow up. Yeah. You know, I got a girlfriend. Yeah. And, you know, there was a time when she was a little girl and, you know, like her dad yeah, that was that was that was like her little angel and and now she's doing you know her own thing and yep. you know i think that's also another thing that's helped me grow as well is the closer i get to my little siblings or and whatnot the more i have that perspective you know of how to treat a woman right and my goodness life is crazy it, it, up, no? But when you but when you when you connect the dots, you know there's a, it makes sense. It makes a little more sense. Pero yun nga, you have to connect the dots. Ang nakakatuwa sa yo, again with intent. Kino nek mo yung dots, because there are people who up to now are just staring at the dots, thinking they're just dots. You can't be passive about it. You have to be proactive. When it comes to connecting the dots, it's something that you have to do proactively. You need to really look at it like it's a puzzle and put the pieces together. Right. Because whether you know it or not, 
it means something. Like this conversation that we're having right now, it means something. You know, That's a lot. Yeah, you know, the hardships that me and my mother had when I was growing up, it means something now. And we're a lot closer for it. Yeah. You know, I have a deeper understanding of why she's the way that she is because of what she went through. Yes. Um, and she's had to be strong. She had to. You know, she. we come from a very... Uh, it's very conservative over there, right? And, you know, my mom, she, she's known for her voice. Yeah. And how she expresses herself is, is to her, it's her art. And, you know, she, she, she made it as far as she has doing what she has. And she bought a home for her parents that they live in to this day. And she's paid for her sister's schooling and she's put food on our plate. And whether or not the public has something to say about it, who really gives a shit? That's true. She did what she did to provide. Yeah. She did what she did to take care of me when I hit rock bottom. Yeah. There was a coffee on the counter every single morning when I was going through therapy. Yeah. Because she reminded me. That I was important. People actually didn't. The, the, the people don't know Yo, that your mom. My, my mom went above and beyond to repair and atone. Yeah, what was missing when I was growing up, like, and that is something that no matter. Yeah. No. No matter what type of dispute we might be going through ever, I'm always going to be grateful for that. She. 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 She's really, a strong woman. Okay, yun ang maganda eh. When you say she's a strong woman, okay, Jay, may ano ba? May tissue doon, Jay. <laughs> so, when, oh no, I'm good. I'm when good. you say she's a strong woman, ang galing eh. Because, deep inside, you know, paano ako masasabihin? Deep inside, thank you, you have your mom. Right? And for people who who don't know this, I hope this brings a new perspective kay Geneva Cruz. You have your mom. Si Mama had your mom too. Everybody had your mom. Question is, who does she have? Right? People, this, people forget that part. Eh? And what people don't understand lalo na yung mga tao sa Pilipinas na hindi na-witness yung ginawa ni Geneva Cruz sa Amerika, she really rolled up her sleeves. She did. Right? Yun ang, yun ang nakakabilib sa mami mo eh. She really rolled up her sleeves. That's a teleserye in and of itself. And what's crazy is, uh, or what's, What is, very, what is to be respected is that she found a way to make something happen. Yeah. Yeah, she, 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 she really, she, she didn't bus stop. No. She found a solution to a problem. Yep. And, you know, like, you know, when she had to go, she had to go. Not only right? that, when she went back to the Philippines, yung confidence niya sayo. Yeah, that I was in a much better place. Was already there. And ikaw rin, I hope you take it in, into account na her being in the Philippines is possible because you helped her make it possible. I would say so. You know, not, not, to, sound, not, not to sound cocky, but just rather confident that, yes. that I have a solid foundation under yes. my belt mm -hmm. and that she was a big part in putting those those cinder blocks yeah, together, yeah. Because yeah. when you were when you were down, di ba? Ako ano lang ako eh, audience lang ako eh. Not to say hindi kami nag-usap, nag-usap kami. But <laughs> man, y'all went at it though. You guys, you know, you guys really, you you guys, <laughs> you guys are entertaining to to watch sometimes. Because, oh yeah, because you guys really do. You guys have your differences, but. Yeah. And and you guys are very head first, right? 
but at the same time you know you're you're always you're even though it gets loud sometimes you guys are always um you you guys have a common goal not only that not only having a common goal which is you we're there also for each other yes as not only friends brothers and sisters ang dating namin eh. right which is, which is probably weird for some people to to hear but unless you're you're living it yeah you know it, it really does make sense like you know yung le- yung huling messenger namin na and in the end gagawin mo yung kanta ko hindi ang sagot ko was oo oh, gagawin ko that was the end of it right so it's a uh, and yun nga yun nga yun nga yung nakakatawa on your part what's it like having being part of a blended family because i had my family was in take i had a mom a dad a brother and a sister and that was me growing up. And I mean, it had a blended side to it too. Pero that was after the fact that your lo- when your Lola died, that's when the blending happened. Yeah. Pero ikaw, you've been living a blended family after three years old. Naging blended ka na eh. But how, how is it in a blended family? And how do you, what advice can you give kids who are in a blended family? Or even parents na nagpapaka-blended? Hmm. When I was uh, when I was growing up, there was a lot of confusion mm. because not only did you and my mom, you know, go your separate ways, but also my mom and my stepdad went their separate yeah. ways, and also you and uh, Tiny. Tita Tiny went your separate ways. Yes. So it happened to me. Th- it, it happened in my lifetime three times. Correct. And it was there was a point where, and I wondered. Is it my fault? Ooh, ooh. You know, is this because of me? Because you're the common denominator in three. Because this happened everywhere, right? And it's not. If if there's a kid listening to this, I mean, it's it shouldn't be. Because eventually, you're gonna have relationships of your own and. You know, you you gain perspective of being in a relationship is just difficult, period. It takes work. It takes acti- It takes accountability. Right. Meaning it takes a person willing to accept where they're, where they're wrong. It takes acknowledgement of each other's strengths and wi- and weaknesses and you know it, and it's not the end of the world because man if you if you're if you're part of a blended family there will come a time wherein you'll have a family of your own and you could determine whether you want to have history repeat itself or if you want to do things different. Is that why kasi hindi ka babaero eh. Is that the reason why? I think the re- well it, it it took for me to knock on your door and tell you yo I don't want to do this anymore. Right. Because there was a time where I thought it was okay. Correct. There was, there was a time when you told me hey as long as you know she as long as you guys aren't married, it's okay. Because I was, I was wrong too. And that's where I was talking about earlier in the podcast that I had to unlearn some things. Yes. And I had to decide when enough was enough. And it all starts with, with, with telling yourself, I'm not going to be who my parents were. Amen. With all due respect. Yeah. You know, because that, that's all part of breaking what we call generational curses yeah that's true so you got to ask yourself if you're if you're that person going through it because you know divorce is so easy and getting married married is so difficult now do i want to be like the past generation do i want to be like how my parents were if your parents had a happy marriage you might say you might ask that question with a happier tone Mm. 
if they had a crappy relationship, you'd probably be a little, you know, saying stuff under your breath. Like, oh, man, why would I want to be like that? Do I really want to be like them? Right. It depends on how you want your, your future to look. So I can't speak for others, but I could share what I experienced and I could share my mistakes and I could share where I went wrong with how I viewed things in the past. And I could tell you that from, from now in hindsight being 2020, I feel good. I'm in a very stable state of mind. I feel at peace with myself. Right. Alvin, one of my best friends, he asked me uh, just the other day, where do you see yourself at 30? I go, a bit happier. <laughs> I want to be able to, to go anywhere I want and not have to check Chase to, to see if I have enough money <laughs> to buy it. And I'm talking food. I'm not talking luxury items. I just want to be able to go to Panda and get a three entree, you know, one, two sides and not, and not worry about my budgeting and stuff like that. You know, just simple things because honestly, I'm pretty happy right now. Right. I'm pretty happy because I feel like I am not, I'm not focused on what's on, on what I don't have. I'm spending more time focusing and being grateful for the things and the people that I do have. I got both my parents. Yeah. If I wanted to WhatsApp Casey, I could. That's true. I don't have to wonder and hold on to grudges that I have. You know, I've forgiven the people that were talking crap about you when we were going to church. Right. Doesn't mean that I want to have a relationship with them. Uh-huh. You know, the, you know, just because I, I don't want you on my table doesn't mean that I am not wishing you success or joy or happiness. I'm focused on, on the people who have been with me through the tough times because I know that when, when I flourish, now that I'm flourishing, we could really enjoy moments even, even greater than before. Yeah. Because like back then when I was like really having a hard time, we were smiling we were laughing. We were going. We were. We were finding joy through through the hardships. And and now that I'm in a more uh, stable state of mind, you know, just replying to replying to Alvin's text message or his just his his question, it was it wasn't hard for me to reply. I don't feel the need to have to prove anything to anybody. You know that doesn't wish me the best that doesn't know me well Galing. that doesn't know my spirit because i know my spirit and i know my intentions i know that i genuinely care about the people i care about i know that when i wish someone success it comes from my heart and even though i've made mistakes i know that i mean well mm. execution just Sometimes maybe the way I went about it just wasn't as effective right. because I was way more focused on being efficient. I feel pretty balanced right now, and I think the opportunities are going to come with it because of it. That's true. So that's why I felt really good about being here. You know, even though I was anxious about, oh, man, how is it going to turn out? <laughs> you know, uh I know that you weren't feeling the best either. We got to do it for the season finale. Hey. You know, because it, like, why not now? It's a, it's a father and son moment. Yeah, hindi lang yun. Namimiss din naman kita sobra. Yeah, you hear from me all the time. You know, I'm not a stranger. I, I mean, I call more than once a week. Yeah. yeah. I'll call you on my lunch break just to check up. Mm-hmm. You know, and... And it's funny, too, because I knew being here, you'd always tell me about all the times that you would, like, brag to your friends and just whoever. Oh, my son's this, that, and the third. I mean, I'm not really a notable figure in society as far as 
you know, saving lives and whatnot, but I can take care of myself. I can check in to call and see how you're doing, check up on my siblings and you could set you could definitely you do have the bragging rights to say that you have a pretty cool relationship with your son. Yeah. Because I could say the same thing uh because to me it's a, a reciprocative. Yeah. But in that I mean you are someone a lot of people can be proud of. Pero ako, whether you're my son or not, as a man, I am in I am impressed and I am very proud of you. Thanks, Dad. I'm still working on it. Yeah. But I know you are it's an everyday thing. Yeah. And that's what makes it exciting is you know, if you're if you're proud of whatever this is. Can you imagine the next step and all that stuff? Yeah. There's still, there's still more, you know, there's still more in the future. And I think that's what makes it exciting. It's like when you suck at something, right. And, and you're not particularly good at it at, at that moment. What's exciting is knowing that if you keep it going, you could eventually be pretty good at it. Right. Just with everything, just with picking up the drums, just like learning a new sport, new skill, a new martial art or whatever. You know, everybody got to start at white belt, right? That's you, Yun. Yeah. So, are you willing to take your licks or not? That's it. And a lot of it has to do with letting go of your pride. That's true. So, ladies and gentlemen, heaven at Espacochaga. It was my pleasure being here. Get it?